In the 1970s, a wave of young people traveled to Southern California looking for truth. Then something extraordinary happened. The pastor of a struggling church opened his doors to a charismatic street preacher and a steady stream of new visitors. And that gave birth to one of the greatest spiritual awakenings in U.S. history. Now the story is a major motion picture. Ephraim Graham went to Los Angeles for the premiere of Jesus Revolution. It's taken filmmaker John Irwin seven years to bring this more than 50-year-old story to screen. All right, three, go, take one, Mark. This project has taken many twists and turns, longest I've ever worked on a movie. My hope is people enjoy the movie, um, and we want to make you laugh and cry, but there really is a, a, a movement behind this movie. The Jesus Movement began on the West Coast and spread in an historic Christian revival that saw young people, hippies, turning to God. The drugs, it's a quest. For what? For God. How can you not see that? There is an entire generation right now searching for God. That real life revival unfolding here in Southern California in the 1970s is what Time Magazine called the Jesus Revolution. Just four years earlier, the front page of the very same magazine was asking this question. Is God dead? John, how do we go from is God dead to four years later, Jesus Revolution on the cover of Time? Yeah, I bought <laughs> I brought the like this is I bought I bought this Time magazine, Jesus Revolution, uh uh seven years ago on eBay and read this article and and then I I bought this one as well, the, Is God Dead? First cover of time without a picture. Um, and that was my very question of like, what happened in between these two magazines? You have this very bleak statement and then this sort of psychedelic Jesus and, and something was happening so undeniable um, in, in American society that Time Magazine had to get, give it credit with a cover story, as did Life Magazine, Look Magazine. Then I began to study it and I wanted to meet people that lived in. So that, that was the beginning of my relationship with Greg Laurie. <laughs> Pastor Greg Laurie leads one of the largest churches in the country. I just wanted to say. His faith and love story begin inside the Jesus movement. People know me as an older guy, and it's interesting for them to be introduced to us when we were young. It's our story, but it's like I'm watching another story, but it's a story of redemption. And, and we're sort of, um, I think, representing a generation of young people that we're searching. There's this church. It's called Calvary Chapel. When we say we're looking for truth, what if this is true? Because everything that we've been trying is not working for me. I was aware of how powerful it was for me. It was real. It was life changing. It was overnight. It was darkness to light. But um, and I saw I've seen it played out in others lives as they've had encounters with Christ. But I never thought our story, especially my story, would be told in such a beautiful way. I just can't be let down again. What I felt in there, I haven't. What if it's good for a minute and then it's gone? What then? We can find out together. Joe Courtney plays Greg. Anna Grace Barlow plays Kathy. And The Chosen's Jonathan Rumi rounds out the cast. I play Lonnie Frisbee. Lonnie was a powerful witness to the charismatic gifts of the Holy Spirit working in his generation. Rebels against old-fashioned authority. I think these kids need help. What they need is a bath. You're passing judgment on people you know nothing about. Maybe that's why your church is so empty. When God walks in here, brings me a hippie. I'll ask him what it's all about, because I do not understand. His house has a very good vibe. What do you think it is about your characters who are real life people who help to give birth to what happens in our country during this time? The culture was in a moment of like fraught uh, need. You know, uh, I think that's kind of what primes a revival is uh, this kind of like lost, uh, you know, sheep. The need, the desire to like reground yourself. And uh, there's no grounding that's better than, you know, the cornerstone of Christ. You know, I think as humans, we're hardwired for a couple of things. One of those is community, only second to, to God. Relationship with God 
and community with each other. And when those two things seem to be compromised in society en masse, the spirit starts to rebel against that and try to figure out how to put that back in its right order. And so you have, I think, this, these revivals. And I think you see it now. It's what's going on in Kentucky. I want to piggyback on that because I can't stop thinking about DeMar Hamlin going down on the field a few weeks ago. Mm. And the gut reaction was to take a knee and pray. Pray on national television. I was like, I haven't seen anything like this mm. in years. When they say we're primed for it, it's sort of like a, like a buzz phrase that I've been hearing around this movie. It's, I think that's true. Our country is a dark and divided place. But in that tent, there's hope and unity and miracles that I can't even explain. Kevin, I've heard filmmakers say that getting a movie made is a miracle. In working on this as one of the producers, where would you say you saw miracles? There's moments of miracles whenever you make a film. I mean, obviously the entire process, but this one had miracle after miracle where you really, we really sensed and felt God's presence throughout the entire process. And the sun, everything's perfect. Including how actor Kelsey Grammer signed on for the lead role of Calvary Chapel pastor Chuck Smith. I was having a sort of a late night and I sat in my living room and I was thinking, you know, I want to do something that actually has some value hmm. beyond just the fact that I'm doing another role or uh, something that uh, I enjoy playing. And uh, the very next morning, this script was delivered to my house. If, if you feel like you're an outcast, then join us here. If and from Graham, like CBN News, Los Angeles. Misunderstood and judged. What a wonderful trip down memory lane for me. I remember this. I remember the Jesus Revolution. I remember all the turmoil of the 1960s, the anti-war movement, the rise of hippies, the uh, racial unrest, the number of assassinations we had, uh, the Vietnam War, the dislocation that uh, we all experienced. And then this great Jesus Revolution came. Well, today, do we have racial division? Do we have uh, literally rioting in our streets? Do we have this huge political divide where we view one another as enemies, not as fellow Americans? Uh, I was reading some survey, you know, like 15% of Democrats think the world would be a better place if Republicans died, and 18% of Republicans thought that the world would be a better place if Democrats die. That, that shouldn't be. And how do we get revival again? Well, let's come to God and say, this kind of hatred in our heart is not of you. You are love. And if you're in our heart, if you're in my heart, then I am loving people. I'm even loving people I think are my enemy because they're not. They're my brother. They're my sister. If you want to get revived, go see Jesus Revolution. It'll, for me, it brings back a lot of memories. For a lot of people, they may not know anything about it. But it opens in theaters across the country starting today. You can find out where it's showing in your area by going to cbnnews.com.